Do you know anyone who suffers from ophidiophobia? That's fear of snakes. It's a reasonably common fear. And like all the vast catalog of phobias listed in the last decade, playing upon it harmfully, facing the victim with that which he fears, might well have disastrous results. Hello, creeps. This is T4Y, opening the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Our story tonight is guaranteed to frighten you. To leave you 25 minutes from now cold with horror. Our author has been called the modern Edgar Allan Poe. Most of you are familiar with his works. Both here on the Mystery Playhouse and on many of the suspense programs that you hear each week. His name is Cornell Woolrich. The story is called A Death is Caused. On the terrace of a smart cafe sit two smartly dressed young women. Only a certain languorous warmth in the air betrays the fact that the scene is a restaurant on a tropical island. Their conversation, one would imagine, would be the same small talk going on about them. Yet as we draw closer to their table, we hear the attractive brunette say, then why don't you kill him, Pauline, if you hate him so much? Wives who kill their husbands are generally arrested, Marie. Only if they do it in the usual foolish way. Now, if I'd married Donald and wanted to get rid of him... You were in love with Donald before I married him, weren't you? Oh, I might have married him if you hadn't. He's worth several million. That's a lot to pass off. But, as I was saying, if I wanted to get rid of him, I'd simply find his weakest point and turn it against him. Weakest point? Yes. Some fear of his. See? Well, everyone is afraid of some one thing. Fire, water, falling off a cliff. You must know his. Yes, maybe I do. Well? Snakes. Snakes? Oh, that's nothing, dear. Most people have an aversion to the slimy thing. Oh, no, no. His, his goes deeper than that. We saw one once along a path. I thought he was going to have an attack of some sort. Later, he admitted he had a mortal fear of the thing. Wouldn't even let me mention them again. Well, that could be our point of attack. Now, if he were to think there were a deadly poisonous snake loose in the house with him... Oh, but how could I get a poisonous snake into the house without risking my own life? Well, it wouldn't really be poisonous, Pauline. It would make him believe it was. And his imagination would do the rest. Finish your cocktail, dear. You mean it would really be death by imagination? Well, of course. Now, see here. You know that closet under the stairs in your house? Hmm. Well, if Donald should be trapped in that closet and made to believe a snake is in there in the dark with him, if he thinks he can't get away from it or see it to kill it, no human could stand that. Especially Donald with his phobia. But then it wouldn't seem like murder at all, would it? Well, of course not, darling. Plant the snake in a box or a basket. Let him see it there first. And then take the snake out when he isn't looking and put the empty basket in the closet, tipped over, so he'll think the snake has crawled out. And there's your murder. Death by imagination, with no clues left behind. Oh, but Marie, if it's dark in the closet, how could he see the overturned basket? Most men carry matches. When you have a chance, take all but one out of his pocket. That should burn just long enough for him to see the basket, but not long enough for him to be able to search for the snake. But he'd be terrified and scream, wouldn't the neighbors hear him? Not if you turned on the radio, loudly. No, I could never handle a snake, Marie. You know how bad my heart is. You'll find you can do a lot of things when you're driven to it. But just for fun, try it out first without the snake. Just pretend you've seen one in the house. Watch his reaction. You'll see that I'm right. Oh, dear. What strange byways one's conversation can stray into. Anyone overhearing us might think we were serious. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, I simply must run along. Oh, by the way, speaking of snakes, I know of an amazing snake woman. 
An old native who catches them by the bushel to make cures and remedies. They call her Mama Fernanda, I believe. Mama Fernanda? Yes. Well, come along. I've got the check. This is my treat. Pauline? Oh, here you are. On the sofa again. Donald, something horrible happened today. Well, quit swooning. Sit up and tell me about it. Well, I, uh, I went into the closet to get a vase for some flowers. The big closet under the staircase. You know how dark and damp it is in there. Yes, Pauline, I know. Get to the point. Well, I, I reached down in the dark. I knew right where I'd put the vase the last time. Then I... Well? I heard something. Something in the closet with me. What was it? A hissing sound. What? A hissing sound. I was paralyzed with fear, Donald, because just then my hand touched something cold and slimy. I don't believe it. It's true. There was a snake in that closet with me. You imagined it. Oh, no, Donald, because just then I saw it sliding across the floor out into the living room. Did, did you get it? Was it killed? Well, I couldn't risk my life. It might have been deadly poison. You fool! Where did it go? That's the horrible part of it. I don't know. It couldn't have gotten out. It must have. No, no, Donald. I saw it. That snake is still here, hiding somewhere in this house. I'm ready for bed. You've run enough for one evening. Turn out the lights. Donald, I, I'm so nervous ever since that scare we had yesterday. Please, couldn't I uh, have a glass of brandy before we go to bed? I'm not going down in that basement tonight. Well, then give me the key to the wine closet. I'll go myself. Oh, never mind. I'll go. If you must pamper yourself. Donald! Wait. What's the matter now? I heard something just then. Oh. It came from over there in the dining room. I didn't hear anything. Well, you must have. Listen. It was that hissing sound again. It, it couldn't be the snake. I, I had men searching this house all night last night. Well, you know how lazy and careless those natives are. They could have missed seeing I, it. I went with them. I know it's still in this house. I didn't want to tell you, but I saw it again. Uh, where? I had the radio on. The tube must have made it warm underneath. It oh. crawled under there. You... I turned the radio off, and then, in a little while, I saw it crawling out. Oh. A big yellow thing wriggling across the floor. Stop it! Stop I, it, Pauline! I ran out into the kitchen to get Pepita, and when she came in, it had gone, hidden itself again, in this house somewhere. I've got to get out of here! I told Pepita what it was like. She said it was deadly, oh. Donald. It could kill any of us in an oh. instant. And now it's here. It's here, Donald, in this room. Oh. I heard it just a minute ago. No! Let me out of here! I've got to get out! You were right, Marie. It works. It works beautifully. His mind, his imagination can kill him. When I set the stage. And it won't even be murder. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, you are our Mama Fernanda. Yes, this yes. is your hut. Si, yes, senora. You come to see my little baby? Yes. I want to borrow one of your snakes. Si. But it must be the kind that's not dangerous. Its bite mustn't kill. You understand that? Si, yes, senora. No poison. Harmless. I understand. Come in my hut. Oh, 
Come, Senora, come, come. There is nothing to fear. I have all my babies in charge. You see? The basket. Uh, leave the door open, please. It's stifling in here. Oh, as you wish, Senora. Ah, come, see this basket here. This one is my pet. You're sure it has no poison? No poison, Senora. Look, I show you I let him bite me on the arm. Oh, no, no, please, please don't. He is the ugliest one. That is why I put him in this pretty new basket with fresh leaves. I give you the basket too, Senora. When I want to pick it up, must I use my hand? Oh, no, Senora. I give you the stick with the fork on the end. Uh -huh. Will you show me how to pick him up? Oh, see? So, you put the stick flat on the ground like this, underneath him. You see? Mm -hmm. Always in the middle, not too far at one end, not too far at the other. Then lift him straight. Oh, look. We have to wake him up. Put him back in the basket. See, si, senora. Here is some money. Oh, gracias. Is that enough? Oh, si, senora. More than enough for the basket, too. We'll take it anyway. Gracias. Good night. coffee? I have enough, thank you. <laughs> Dining by candlelight has such charm. Don't you think so, Pauline? So conducive to domestic harmony. Where's Pepita? I let her go. I let all the servants go. There's some sort of celebration the natives are having. I haven't heard about it. Sorry if that annoys you. Everything about you annoys me. Then why don't you let me go? Why do you keep me here, Donald? The door is open. I've told you you can go. You know I can't just walk out into the street. I'm thousands of miles from home. I have no money to get back to the States. Well, you'll just have to stay then, Pauline. Donald, you don't love me. You keep me here to torture me. It's <laughs> the only diversion you have. Why shouldn't I? You married me for my money. I bought you. I shall amuse myself with you as I choose. Very well. I'd better light fresh candles on the buffet. These are about finished. Suit yourself. The men still haven't found the snake, have they? I told you not to speak of that again. I wonder where it could be hiding. Did you hear what I said? What's that you're taking out of the buffet cabinet? I don't know what it is. Just a basket. One of the servants must have brought it in and left it here by mistake. Something they wanted to take to the celebration, probably, and uh. forgot. It just occurred to me. It must be colorful on the table here, between the candles. You're a fool, Pauline. Sit down. I'm sorry about the dessert. Can't I get you some fruit? Have we got any? Well, there's probably some in this basket, yes. Yeah. You mean you haven't looked inside? No. Why don't you? Oh, by golly, I will. It's about time we found out what the servants might be carting away from here. Well, careful now. Don't spill your coffee. Well, is there any fruit inside? Wait, I... I can't see. Oh. Pauline! What is it? The snake! in that basket. In there? I, I saw it with my own eyes. It opened its mouth and reared at me. Help me, Polly. All right, Donald. I'll take the basket out into the kitchen. Be careful. Kick the lid on the basket. I saw it. I saw it. It nearly touched my head. There. Go on. I put it outside. It's like when I, when I was a kid one time, one got into my bed. I, I knew enough not to move, and I, I lay there all night long with it twined around my leg, waiting for them to come into me the next morning. They, they managed to kill it without my being bitten, but 
I've never forgotten it. It scarred my mind for life. Go in the bedroom and lie down. Oh. This is the first one I've ever been that close to since then. My hand was only inches away. Go on now. Get some rest. <sighs> yes, I, I've got to lie down. Lock the screen doors, all of them, tight. It may come back in again in some way. Yes, Donald. It may come back again some way. What was it? What was the first thing Marie said I must do? Remember, Baldy, take the snake out of the basket. Yes, take the snake out of the basket. And I can put it in this canister here until afterwards. You see, Vox, stink, Senora, on the ground, underneath my baby. Then lift up straight. See, he curls himself around his cheek. Ah, in you go. There. Now put the empty basket in the closet under the stairs. Put the basket in one corner, tipped on one side, the lid in the other. Now, what else? What? Oh, yes, yes, the matches. Here's a hook. Just high enough. Now, if I can catch my dress on it. <laughs> no, just, just a little high. There. Now the lace is caught just back of my shoulder. Now, call to me to help you. Go on, Polly. Call. Donald! Donald, you must hear me. Now, go over the bench by the door. You can reach it without tearing your dress. Then you'll be sure to hear. Kick it over, Polly. Donald, you must hear me. Oh, what's all that racket? Donald, it's me. Come here. Oh, what the devil's going on in here? I thought you went to bed. I've been trying to make you hear me. What are you doing in that closet? I came in to get something in the back of my dress somewhere. Got caught on a nail. Oh. I can't reach it. Well, what are you going to do? Stay in there all night? I'm afraid of ruining my dress. If I could only find where it's caught, I could work it off gently. Please help. <sighs> I suppose it's the only way I'll get any rest. Where is it caught? It's somewhere here in the back. Well, move over a little. I'll have to step in around behind you. Find it? Yes. Hold still. Holy! Now, to shoot the bolt. Oh, let me out! Donald, can you hear me? Let me out! Donald, listen to me. In the pocket of your suit, in the right-hand pocket, is a single match. Oh. Take it out. Light it a minute. I want you to see something. What are you Donald, light the match. You'd better do as I tell you. All right, it's lighted now. All right, now look over your shoulder. Look over into the corner. Now into the other corner, quick, while the match still lasts. Holy Don't move. Stand still. You'll be all right. It's in there with you. It's yes, Donald. I wanted to put it someplace where you wouldn't see it. Donald, listen. But the basket dropped out of my hands and rolled over. I think the snake got out. Don't move. Don't move, whatever you do. Stand still, perfectly still. That's your only chance. Now the radio. So the neighbors won't hear. It's quiet now. Donald. Donald. Can you hear me? And there's your bed. Death by imagination. He doesn't answer. He's dead. He must be dead. Now, get rid of the snake. Yes. Yes, the snake. It's in the canister. Gone. There's my baby. He got out. There he is, under the table. Where's my stick? I've got to get it out of here. Use the forked stick. Yes. It goes around it as you lift yes. him up. See? Ah! Oh. Oh. It bit me. No poison, senora. See, I will let it by 
bite my arm. It bit me. There's a horrible red mark. Pauline, Pauline, where are you? Marie. Oh, Pauline, I came to warn you. The snake, where is it? I don't know. It's gone. It fell off the stick onto the floor. Just now, I've got to find it. No, don't touch it. There's been a terrible mistake. Mistake? Yes, the snake woman. She's been trying to find you. She finally just called me. She gave you the wrong snake. It's deadly poison. No! Yes. She said its bite can kill a person in from 10 to 15 minutes. There's no cure. No serum in the world can counteract it. No. Marie, no. No. Oh, what's wrong, boy? It bit me. It bit me just now. Pauline. My hand, look. The red mark, it's already spread. Marie, get a doctor. Save me. You've got to save me. It's too late. Let me go. I'll go to the doctor myself. No, you'd never get there alive. Let me go. You'll die alone on the road. No, I'll there. get there. I will. I'll get there. You're dying, let Pauline. Let me go, Marie. Let me go. Marie. Uh, Marie. Yes, Pauline. Smell it. Oh. Get the book for me. Quickly. Nothing can save you now. Help me. You're dying, Pauline. The poison is killing you. Help me. You. Goodbye, Pauline. Operator. Operator, call Dr. Kenyon's office at once. Dr. Randolph Kenyon. Tell him to come to Donald Barron's house right away. Something terrible has happened. He may be able to save Mr. Barron. No. Pauline Barron was dead when I found her. Dr. Kenyon, how is Donald? It'll take time, Miss Stewart, but he'll recover eventually. Oh, thank goodness. He's asking for you. I'll, I'll look after him, Doctor. I'll see he gets the best of care now that that she's gone. It was fortunate for him he lost consciousness in that closet. It may have prevented him from going completely mad. What do you suppose could have happened that night? Well, Mr. Barron might have been locked in that closet by some accident. Who knows? Then before she could let him out again, the snake uh, bit her? Something like that, yes. But I thought the medical examiner said Mrs. Barron died of a, a heart attack. So she did. They found the snake, you know. She must have thought it was poisonous when it struck and the shock killed her. You know, definitely then, that the snake was not poisonous. She just imagined? Yes. Yes, it was perfectly harmless. You might say Mrs. Barron frightened herself to death. That it was... Death by imagination? Yes. Yes, that's it exactly. How tragic. I wonder how she ever got the impression in the first place that the snake was... Poisonous. That was a death is caused by Cornell Woolrich, heard on your mystery playhouse. And this is T4Y saying good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.